All right, so this lecture will be on transcription. So let's get started. So by definition, we're actually going to be looking at both transcription and translation over the course of the next two lectures. So for this lecture, we're going to be foc focusing on transcription. Trans transcription is the synthesis of a single-stranded RNA from a, from a double-stranded DNA template. And it ends up producing a messenger RNA, which we call mRNA. Translation, on the other hand, trans is, uh, translation is the first stage of protein biosynthesis from RNA. So this process results in the formation of a polypeptide by using mRNA as a template. Okay, and again, this takes place on a ribosome. Now, both transcription and translation are processes that are part of gene expression. Once again, we're just graphically showing you over here that in, uh, in eukaryotic cells, at least, we have the, the genetic material, the DNA, that's found inside the nucleus. And remember, this nucleus is bound by a membrane. So, uh, and then again, you have these nuclear pores uh, where the, again, materials are able to, to enter and exit. So, and then we have the cytoplasm over here. So, transcription will take place inside the nucleus in eukaryotic cells and then translation in other words now that we've built we now that we have uh, directions on how to make a protein the protein will exit the nuclear membrane um, will exit the nucleus through the nuclear membrane through the nuclear pores and enter the cytoplasm where it will then bind to a ribosome where the amino acids will come and start to build into the, they'll turn into polypeptides, which will then eventually turn into proteins. And again, this part over here that's taking place, this is the translation. This part that's taking place inside over here, copying this direction from the DNA is what transcription is. Let's take a look at the differences of transcription between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. It's actually, it's, it's, it's the, a little bit different, not a little bit, but actually there's a lot of a lot of differences between the two. Um, first of all, when you look at it, remember, in a prokary prokaryotic cell, the DNA it's found within the, within the cytoplasm. It's not found within the nucleus. There's not a separate membrane-bound area where the genetic material is stored, which is what we see in a eukaryotic cell. So um, transcription, therefore, occurs in the cytoplasm of a prokaryotic cell and then occurs in the nucleus of a eukaryotic cell. In a eukaryotic cell, coupled transcription translation is not possible, right? Whereas in the prokaryotic cell, coupled transcription translation is the rule. In a prokaryotic cell, a single RNA polymerase can, synthesi can synthesize all three types of RNA, right? So, in eukaryotic cells, you have RNA polymerase 1, RNA polymerase 2, RNA polymerase 3. You have three different types of RNAs that are needed, right? So these are going to be the key. There are other differences also, but these are the key, the, the, the big differences that we find between prokaryotic and eukaryotic transcription. All right, so let's look at the stages of transcription. And there's three stages to it. The very first stage is initiation, the second stage is elongation, and the third one is termination. In the very fir in the, the first stage, initiation, we have the attachment of RNA polymerase to the, to the promoter region of DNA. And the promoter region is it's going to be in eukaryotic cells, it's going to be the Tata box. Okay? Uh, so we'll take a look at that uh, in a, perhaps the next slide or a few slides later, where that occurs, where the initiation. Uh, or this promoter region is. The next part is elongation. Very simplistically, this is just building of the mRNA, right? So again, you're building mRNA from the three prime end of the nucle nucleotide polymer. This is what's happening in elongation. Now that you've built the messenger RNA, you need to stop, okay? And that's what essentially termination is. Termination is the release of RNA polymerase and mRNA following transcription of the terminal region uh, uh, of the DNA. Okay? So there's a region on the DNA that says stop. 
And once you get to that, po uh, to that point, both the, the polymerase and mRNA, they, they drop off. All right, so let's take a closer look at the process of initiation. So we start off with, again, RNA polymerase is going to bind to a specific DNA, a specific region on the DNA and initiate transcription at this location. And this location is called the promoter site. All right? So genes on the DNA okay, begin with this promote uh, that, uh, that are found at this promoter region. They consist of a sequence of A's and T's, A's and T's, A's and T's. And it's called the Tata box. Okay, so along with that, and along with this Tata box, we also have, we find the first nucleotides that are involved in the peptide sequence. Okay? Then that brings us to the third point. Then we have transcription factors. And transcrip transcription factors are proteins that they play several ro roles, but again, m pretty much the, one of the big things that they do is that these proteins, they assist uh, with the binding of RNA polymerase to the promoter region. Okay? And again, uh, we tend to find some of these, uh, they, they, they come, we find these proteins near the located close to the promoter region okay this is where, where they're going to occur now the third point over here once we have all these transcription factors and polymerase on a strand of dna we call that a transcription initiation complex that ends up forming okay so a transcription transcription factors and rna polymerase bound to that promoter region of the DNA is what forms this transcription initiation complex. So these transcription factors, uh, the very first one that we have listed over here, which is uh, transcription factor 2D. So trans transcription factor 2D, actually it's made up of, a, th there's two smaller subunits that are found on it. There's uh, transcription AF and TBP. So TBP is actually Tata box binding protein that's found over there. And also along with that, there is that the second subunit that makes up uh, transcription factor 2D is called TAF or uh, the Tata box protein associating association factor, sorry, Tata box protein association factor. So both of these subunits are part of uh, TF2D. So what TF2D does is a few different things. So the very first thing that it does is that it actually recognizes the, the Tata box, okay? So it does that and it can easily bind to the Tata box. Right? That's the other thing that it does. The other thing that it does is that it causes a kink, it causes a bend in the DNA, right? So we the first thing that we need would be would be the this uh, this uh, TF two D. The next protein that we have is transcription factor two A and B. Now these are recruiting. These are also recruiting proteins, and they help recruit RNA pol RNA polymerase two to the promoter region. And uh, so TF two A and B again, they both bind, and they're going to try to help polymerase come, they're gonna to try to attract, but they can't do that by themselves. So again, the keyword what I said is that they help recruit it. So that means that RNA polymerase needs a little bit more help to get to come to that Tata box, to the, the uh, to that um, uh, initiation region. So the third player that we have over here, transcription factor to F. So 2F will come and bind to RNA polymerase and it brings it to the promoter region okay? and it attaches to form a pre-initiation complex. So think of this guy, uh, transcription factor 2F, as the final push for RNA polymerase to the Tata box. Then we have the last part, the, the fourth one, which is the transcription factor 2, E, and H. 
So transcription factor 2 actually recruits trans transcription factor H. And what this does is that, um, actually it does a, a few different things also. So um, transcription factor 2E, as I said, it's going to recruit 2H. And then 2H, it can act as either a kinase or it can act as a helicase. Okay, so it can do one of two things. Now, the other thing that it can actually do is that uh, the helicase can also, so on the polymerase, okay, on the on DNA polymerase, there is a, what's called the, the C-terminal domain that we have over there. So on the C-terminal domain, helicase can phosphorylate, okay, to that C, uh, the C-tail, and then that causes the polymerase to escape the Tata, uh, Tata box and move in the 5 to 3 prime direction. Let's go over what we've uh, talked about so far and very quickly recap over a few things. So remember, we are trying to copy DNA into, we want essentially what we want to do is we want to make a protein. And the way we're going to make a protein is if we have DNA and we need to take the direction from DNA and then we convert that language from DNA into something that uh, our cell can, the, the, uh, the cell's machinery can understand to produce that protein. So uh, we need to convert that DNA into a language which we called, again, which is the mRNA. And then that mRNA ends up being converted or uh, translated into a protein. So remember, we're going from DNA to messenger RNA, okay? And this part is the transcription part, okay? And then this mRNA then will go and attach onto a ribosome, and then what does it do at that point? It will start to get, the protein will start to build. And that is what's called translation. All right, so today we're just talking about what's going on over here. So in, or, in other words, how do we go from DNA to producing, N, to producing mRNA? How do we do that? How do we copy a part of a, uh, a, a DNA sequence to produce a protein? So three things that we said need to happen are initiation, elongation, and termination, right? So initiation, we need elongation, and we need termination. So um, right now, we're going to be looking at everything that we need to do over here for initiation. So in, in, each, in, in initiation, remember, first we need a starting site, right? So we need a start site. And what do we need over here at the start site? We need, you know, we find a promoter region, OK? And remember what we said in the slides before. That promoter, the promoter region that we have, it's what we call this, this Tata box, right, that we have over there. All right, so we have this start site. Next thing that we need is we need, that start site needs to be recognized somehow, okay? So we need people, we need something to help us recognize that site. And this is where we have the, the start site recognition proteins come into play. Okay, the start site, start site recognition proteins. And remember, these are all what we spoke about before, this, the transcription factors. So this is called, over here, transcription factors, TFs. All right, so, um, and remember, these transcription factors, uh, their key thing is that they're gonna be not their key thing, but again, a big part of it is that they're going to be recruiting the um, uh, the p polymerase RNA polymerase two to this start re the, this uh, uh, the uh, promoter region. Next thing we need, third step is well, we need that we actually need the RNA polymerase. So remember what we said before: RNA polymerase. We have three different types: is RNA. Po there's RNA polymerase one, RNA po polymerase two, and RNA 
polymerase 3 right so right now we're dealing with RNA this is what we're dealing with RNA polymerase 2 so whenever you have RNA polymerase 2 the transcription factors that work with them they're also going to be transcription factor 2 all right so in other words if you're when we're working with RNA polymerase 1 then they're all going to be transcription factor 1s and for RNA polymerase 3 all the transcription factors are going to be TF3s okay so remember we are working this is what we're looking at now that's what we're interested in so um, moving along once we have that one other thing that we need is okay fine we've got the, the the polymerase to the start region we've got everything good we have all the machinery that we need but well you know you can't just do whatever you want whenever you want you know there needs to be a certain time that it, it should happen right and then you also need to be able to stop it so there's also regulatory proteins okay and again the job for these regulatory proteins is that they could either do one of two things they can either be activators and again activators are what they will activate they will start or they can stop they won't let the transcription go through and again we call those inhibitors Okay, so again, activators, inhibitors. All right, now let's move along with that. So let's make a, all right, imagine this is DNA, right? So we have DNA over here. And what do we have over here? We've got this, let's see. All right. All right, there you go. So we have this region over here. Let's do it like that. Maybe we can make it a little bit wider. Okay, let's start over. Okay, here we go again. So we have this region over here, and we're gonna go right, let's just say right around over there. There we go, and this is gonna be our, our Tata region, all right? Uh, in, in other words, the promoter region. This is where it's gonna be at. So what do we need? What did we say before? We need to have we, we're going to be working with RNA polymerase. Is it one, two, or three? So remember, this is transcription. Therefore, it's going to be RNA polymerase two. Okay? So in order to get RNA polymerase over here, the first thing we need, the first transcription factor we need is TF2D. So TF2D needs to come over right around over here. Okay. So it looks something like that. TF2D, this is a protein, and this protein has got a couple of subparts, a big protein. And there's a subpart over here, and there's another one right around over there. Okay. So hold on, let me do this. Okay, so let's just make this a different color instead. Let's do this blue. Okay, so this is gonna be another protein over here. So there's two other proteins that we find uh, uh, as a part of this big, uh, this uh, TF2D, all right? So, and let's write this over here as being the tf 2 D protein. So this over here, this is this is called the TBP. This is Tata box binding protein. Okay, Tata box, Tata box binding protein. And then this guy over here is the Tata box binding protein. This is this association factor TAF. Okay, so, and TAF is, again, as I said before, it's Tata box. Binding protein association factor. Okay, 
So that's what this is over here. So we have TAF and TVP. Again, both of these are part of the this um, TF2D protein. So now what is what happens over here? What do these guys do? What does this TF2D do? So as I said before, what this will do is that it is the first protein, this uh, transcription factor 2D, that will actually recognize the Tata box. And it can easily bind to it, to the Tata box. And the other thing that it does is that it causes a slight bend in this DNA. Okay, so what's going to happen is, let me erase this a little bit and redraw. So what it, it will do is, it will go over here and, all right, and it's going to make this bend over here, okay? It'll do that. Now, and you'll get, you guys will see one of the reasons why this is gonna be happening later on. So this is what this will do, okay? This, uh, the tight up, the TF2D protein. Next thing that's gonna happen is that we go to, so here, let's put this on. Number one is we have this TF2D. The next thing that we ha have is, number two, we will have transcription factor two, a, B. Remember, these are recognition proteins, and they help recruit the RNA, um, RNA polymerase two, to this promoter region. So uh, now what's going to happen is again we end up having, we've got this bend over here, and we have the two D over here, and now we end up having. Let's use a different color over here. We have. So remember this. Um, Here, let's put it over here. So here we have our B, and then let's just say over here we have our we have our A. All right. So we th these are our the TF two A and B that end up coming and attaching to this promoter region. Again, they come and they attach to the RNA, the, uh, the uh, TFT2D, TF2. Yes, the TF2D, sorry, right over here. So what's gonna happen next at this point? So now we, so what this does essentially is, again, TF2, A and B, it'll help recruit RNA polymerase two to this promoter region. And then it creates, it primes things up for the next step, which in the next step, what is, what's going to end up happening is we end up getting another guy coming over here. And this is going to be RNA. It's uh, not RNA, I'm sorry. This is going to be TF2F, okay, TF2F. Transcription factor 2F. So transcription factor to F, it's gonna come and it's gonna bind to the RNA polymerase and it brings it to the promoter region and attaches to form a pre-initiation complex, right? So here, let's draw out our polymerase now. Okay, so let's just use an orange, All right? So now we have RNA polymerase that comes in, All right? So now the polymerase is gonna come. So when the, as a, uh, remember, so how does this pol polymerase come over here? Oh, let's go back. The pol polymerase is gonna come over here with the help of, as this will come over here and bind, okay? So TF2F will come and bind and bring this RNA polymerase, and this is polymerase, to the Tata box, to the promoter region. Now this is done. So when you have these three players or these three proteins, transcription factors, that are working with the with RNA polymerase two and the the promoter region. This is what we call a pre-initiation complex. 
So this pre-initiation complex is formed at this point with, the, with these three guys that are in play. Now we need regulatory proteins to start or stop the transcription, right? So now everything over here is in place, okay? So what can happen? Either transcription is going to, the polymerase is going to start reading or it's not going to read, it's going to stop. So again, this is what needs to, to occur. So remember we, we talked about before earlier, we can have either, we have a, we have a, here, there we go. But activators and inhibitors. So again, if you have a positive signal, positive signal say, okay, start going, take off. It's gonna cause, in other words, it's gonna cause this polymerase, uh, R, the RNA polymerase two to escape the region and start reading, okay? So that's, that's what we want to happen if we wanna produce mRNA. If we don't, then again, at that point, we want an inhibitory signal if we don't want it. So at this point, it's coming over here. We have this pre-initiation pre complex has formed. Now something else needs to happen. So remember, what do we have over here? This is what? DNA, right? And w DNA, remember, we have these um, complementary base pairing that's occurring. So if remember, we have A over here, there's a T over there, if there's a G over here, there's a C over here. Remember, they're connected to one another, right? So these things are connected. It's a double helix. So polymerase can only read one strand at a time, all right? So now what we need to do is we need to open this up, all right? So how is that going to happen? So the fourth player, the fourth player that's needed now, that is if, again, if we have this, a positive signal, all right, to go, then we end up having the fourth guy that comes in. And this is where TF2, E, and H come in place. All right, so what's gonna happen over here is this. So TF2, E, and H, they, as I said before, TF2, E goes and actually recruits H, okay? TF2, E will go and recruit H, and then we end up getting um, TF2, H, okay? That comes in onto polymerase. Now, what this is gonna do, this uh, helicase, so TF2, TF2, H can either work as a, a helicase or a kinase. So um, what it will do is that helicase, it's gonna, remember I was telling you before, we have these, the complementary the, the comp, the complementary base pairs over here, they're connected to one another. So we need to break these bonds. And who does that? Helicase, okay, that's its job. It's gonna come and open this up and, and again, make this replication bubble. All right, and that's what we end up calling this replica, the replication bubble, and we end up getting this. Um, we'll show it in the next. I think in the next drawing, I'll kind of show you that how it open, how it will open up. So, helicase will open it up. Okay, so now that they're separated, now that the two strands are separated, once the bonds are broken, then polymerase can start to move along. It can start to read. Okay, at that point, until these bonds, as long as these bonds are connected it's not gonna be able to read. So this is the job for helicase. Helicase will come and open up these bonds. It'll break up these bonds and open up this, um, th this part of the, the, the frame, the reading frame the, uh, that, that will be there. So that is the role for uh, TF2E, actually for TF2H specifically, because again, again, you can't get H without E. Now, the other thing that, so again, I said two things. So what did I say so far about this? This could be either a kinase or a helicase, right? Now, one other thing that happens, as I said earlier. Now, we need to get this thing kicked off, right? Well, how are we gonna get it kicked off? How is polymerase gonna move? How do you move a car? A car, in order for a car to move, you need to give it some fuel. You need to put gas in it. Well, guess what? Same thing over here. Polymerase also needs some energy. So how do we, what do we do? What does helicase do? So um, they're on this, the polymerase. There's a C-terminal domain, okay, over here, the C-terminal domain. So uh, helicase, what it, what it will do is that uh, it's gonna go and phosphorylate, okay, to the C-terminal, uh, to the C-tail of polymerase, and it cause it, and then it will cause, once it's uh, the, the, the C-terminal 
domain, your C terminal domain of the polymerase is phosphorylated, it's going to cause that polymerase to escape the tata box. So in other words, escape, it means it starts, it starts to move. Okay, It's going to start to go and, and read the, the strand that it needs to read uh, and start to the transcription. Okay, And again, it goes from, uh, it's going to move in a 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So uh, it will go from 5 prime to 3 prime. This is how, so this is going to be the mRNA, mRNA. Okay, it goes from 5 to 3, and the DNA gets read. So you write 5 to 3, and you read, you read down 3 to 5. Okay, uh, so 3 to 5, 3 prime to 5 prime, you're going to be reading. Uh, the DNA gets read. Because remember, they're anti parallel. All right, so uh, that is what is going on in terms of all these the transcription factors. This is this is it, guys. All right, so to look over here, what we're looking at again is this: um, we have this DNA se sequence, and uh, within that sequence, we have our well, we have a five prime over here, and we have the three prime over here. And then we have our polymerase that comes and atta uh, attaches to the to the Tata box. And then what we what we have uh, the other we have all of our uh, our transcriptional factors that are also attached. And so the other thing is, you know, we talked about right. Great. In order for polymerase to attach, it needs all these uh, transcriptional factors. We need to have the Tata box, and then this thing can it can uh, move along, can proceed, or it it may not proceed. So whether it proceeds or whether whether polymerase will start to transcribe or not, in other words, the other, th the other thing that we say is, you know, will it escape? Will polymerase escape this Tata box and, and move forward? Whether that happens or not, that's the process of regulation. So in regulation, remember, we said that, um, yeah, here, the regulatory proteins, it could be either activators, okay, or they could be inhibitors. All right, so if you come back down over here, let's. So when we start, when we start to go in this direction, when we start to move in the, because remember, yeah. So when we start moving down in in this direction over here, we set, we are said to be moving upstream. Okay, so when you go upstream to the Tata box, what we find are in close, maybe about ten base pairs away or so, we have. An area over here that that's uh, I ended up uh, showing you in, in this orange color. So over here we have this DNA region, right? And this DNA region will end up going and binding to a um, a protein, okay? And this protein essentially will be a repressor, okay? So what it will do is that again, this is it's a uh, it's going to be yeah. It's going to inhibit, okay? So it's not going to allow polymerase to move forward. It's, it's going to prevent this. It, so it'll do actually two things, right? So repression, it won't allow polymerase to escape, okay? It's not going to let it move down this way. That's one thing that'll happen. And the other thing that this repressor will do is that uh, this inhibitory protein will do is that it will not, it may not allow for this DNA complex to go from a closed position to an open position. Because remember, when we have DNA, when you're looking over here, here, let me kind of go over here. So remember what we have. So remember, we've got an A over here. We have a A, T, maybe a G, C. And then if this is an A, and this is a, this will be a T, right? This will be an A, this will be a C, this will be a G, right? So remember. DNA is a double helix, so these parts are connected, right? All right, so now in order for polymerase, in order for this polymerase to work over here, this guy to be able to be read, then what needs to happen is that um, these bonds, they have to be open up. We can't keep it like this, so this needs to separate. So how's that gonna separate? Remember what I told you before, helicase ends up coming and opening this up. So the other thing that 
you know, a, the, the, uh, the repression, okay, or the inhibitory proteins will do, this guy over here, is that it will not allow this opening up. It's not going to allow this, the, the DNA to go from a closed to, uh, from a closed complex to an open complex, right? It will prevent that, that, that this melting from taking place, which will open this up, these, these parts up, and then for the polymerase to start to move along. Because uh, as, again, this polymerase is going to be sliding down, this is the function. This is what will be occurring. This will be opening up. The double helix, o the, the complex opens up to allow for polymerase to be able to read. So this is what happens with, with, uh, with repression. So either it's not going to allow the DNA complex to change it from a closed to an open formation, or it's not going to, it's going to prevent this polymerase from escaping, from moving forward, okay? Those are the two things. So now, the other thing that we find when we move upstream, okay, so again, when we go upstream, is on the DNA we have these enhancer regions, all right? So, which is right over here that I've colored in, in blue. So this enhancer region on the DNA, it's going to be, attra it, it, it will be attracting uh, uh, some, again, enhancing a protein that's going to be activatory, right, in, in this case, right, in this region over here. So, and then that's denoted by this purple protein over here. And this activatory protein, it has an element that's attracted to the polymerase, right? So it has a polymerase attachment site, right, which is in green. So essentially when this protein over here goes and makes contact with that, it touches it, then it's gonna allow for the escape of polymerase from the tata box, okay, from the, promo from the promoter region. All right, so how is that gonna happen? How does this guy, this is located pretty far upstream, okay, maybe it might be a couple hundred base pairs upstream. Uh, uh, so how is that, gonna, how is that possible for it to go uh, to make a contact from this enhancer region. By the way, the other thing is uh, this uh, enhancer region, they can also be called uh, a UCE, or sometimes they're called a, a, a DCE. So essentially that means upstream control element or distal control element. Okay? So upstream control element, let me write it out, upstream control element or the distal control element, control element, all right? So this is what we see over here. That's what's going to be found. That is this region over here. We, we can use all these terms and they all mean the same thing. So how does that work? What's going to end up happening is this. What the, this, uh, the UCE, and again, when the protein comes and binds to it, when you have this activatory, act, activatory protein that binds uh, to, this, uh, to this enhancer region, to the uh, UCE, it's going to cause this section not to bend, but actually it's going to cause it to loop. Okay, so it loops. So let's take a kind of, let me draw a photograph to show you what, it, what that may look like. So... Uh, Essentially, it's going to look kind of like something like this. Okay, so all right, there we go. So let's say this is our region over here. Can I? I wonder if I could take. No, no, anyways. Okay, all right. So we'll take this over here. This is our promoter region. Let's just go with this. Okay. That's our promoter region, and over here, remember, what, what will we have over here taking place? We have our uh, polymerase that's going to come and attach over here. Okay, and then remember what we said, this part over here we said was the, this enhancer region. So when it loops around, here our enhancer region is over here. Remember we said we had this enhancing protein? Let's make a picture of that enhancing protein. There we go. So now, essentially, what's going to end up happening is... Um, Essentially, at this point, what will happen is, wait, hold on one second. Oops. All right. Uh, 
there we go. So what's going to end up happening is this. Here's our polymerase over here. What ends up happening is that this protein that we have over here, it's purple. So if we take this here, it's a purple protein. So as this loops around, and remember, this is our the upstream control. That's our enhancer region over here. Then we got the protein that, that was bound there, and then I said there was like this, or there's a spot over here for it to touch. There we go. Now I can activate this. So you see what happens? This is over here. And all this, what ended up happening is, is we bent it. So if you look over here, this is just bent now. And as this bent took place, now these two parts are in close proximity to one another. Right? The activatory protein and the polymerase. So now once they make contact, boom, okay, this can escape. The, the polymerase can escape, and it'll go and start doing, it'll start elongating. Okay, so the elongation process will take place then. So that's one way that, that it can happen. Now, the other time is, the, the other thing that, that may happen is that this, if you, if you go over here, you notice that sometimes the, this protein, this activatory, uh, activatory protein, it cannot make contact. It still, there's a, there's a bit of a gap between that and the polymerase, so it needs a little bit of a help. So sometimes you have other players, okay? And we have what are called mediator molecules. Mediator molecules, sometimes they come in and they end up having, they're able to Let's draw this a different color. Uh, let's just go with the gray then this time, All right? They come and they kind of are able to hold on to both the polymerase and the activ activatory protein. So they kind of bridge the gap between the two different elements. And then once they kind of hold on to both the polymerase and to the, uh, the activ pro activatory protein, then again, same thing can happen. Escape will take place. So these are the two things that will happen. So again, sometimes these active molecules and polymerase, they can interact directly. And other times, you know, we need this, uh, we need another molecule, okay, which, which is what we call this mediator, mediator molecule that will come and connect uh, the activator and the polymerase together. All right, so uh, this kind of uh, wraps up everything for this initiation process. So next, we'll be talking about elongation. So once the initiation is completed, the two strands of the DNA, they unwind, all right? So now we are at this elongation phase. So remember, what ended up happening, we formed our, uh, the, uh, the initiation complex what was, uh, was completed, okay? The DNA, it went from a closed to an open uh, open formation and open uh, shape. We end up, in other words, we end up getting our replication fork that was created, the replication bubble that, that was created. Now polymerase will start to read and build a mRNA strand that's complementary to the DNA uh, transcription unit. And that happens relatively fast. It ha happens at about 60 bases per second. Okay, so again, it's a very fast moving uh, process that's taking place. Now, once the RNA polymerase passes that DNA strand, the, the DNA strands are going to reform their double helix, okay? Once, it's, uh, once the polymerase passes, so in other words, once this reads and it builds, then the double helix, it reforms again, okay? So this will continue on. Again, it's going to continue to, the DNA polymerase will continue to read and build the, the uh, transcript until it gets to this the last part, the terminator region. And over here, essentially what ends up happening is when the polymerase transcribes this termina terminator region of the DNA, the polymerase, it ends up being released from uh, mRNA, right? And that transcribed termination sequence on the mRNA, mRNA is this. It's AAU, AA, AA, elongation termination. So this is what this elongation is. So let's, we spoke about uh, initiation. Next, we're going to be talking about elongation. 
right? And in elongation, essentially what we're talking about is building that transcript, bring, building that primary um, mRNA. Okay, so this is what we're, what we're getting at, at elongation. Building the primary messenger RNA. So, um, you know, to better understand that, let's uh, talk about what we're going to be finding, what we're, what we're going to be dealing with. So if we go over here, okay, and then, um, all right, let's just kind of close it up like that. There we go. So this is our DNA, all right? And we have our three prime over here. And if we trace along this three prime as it goes up and down, this will make it our five prime event. And then, you know, if this is going to be the five prime, then when you come down here, this will be the opposite. This will be three prime. And if you just follow this line and we go up, continue with it, this ends up being our five prime, okay? Because remember, they run anti-parallel. So this strand over here, when you go from the five prime direction to the three prime direction, so starting over here, this is gonna be our, our positive positive sense strand. Okay, this is our positive sense strand. And then the, the on the other end of it, when you go directly below this part over here, this is going to be our antisense, okay, our antisense strand. So we have our positive sense strand, and then we have the antisense strand. Now, the positive sense strand, what, um, it will be doing is that again so when we when we're looking over here at this loop okay this is the area of interest right this part over here this replication fork this replication bubbles that, that's been created so now and let me finish drawing this out so it's going to do a couple of things it's going to be protecting this loop from you know, exonucleases and other interfering factors that are going to th that uh, would uh, that could uh, degrade the nucleotides uh, uh, as they open up. So it's there as a protective measure. Um, this positive strand, that's, you know, it, it acts during the process of elongation. Now, uh, let's make some bases over here. So let's say, for example, let's can say this is a G, maybe an A, a T, C. You know, let's go with another G, G, A, T, 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 A. There we go. Then if we come down over here, of course, we expect the opposite on the on the, uh, in the antisense strand. Oh, by the way, the, another thing is we can call this, uh, if we were to refer to the uh, this positive sense, the plus strand, it can also be referred to as the, the coding strand, okay? We can call it the coding strand. And then this part, the 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 uh, the antisense strand, we can refer to it as the template strand. Okay. So coding strand, template strand, template strand is also the the antisense strand, and then uh, the 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 plus strand, the positive sense strand. That that would be the coding strand. So let's go go to the the template strand, and you know we would find, of course, we have complementary pairing, and this is DNA that we're looking at. So if we have a G over here, then on the bottom we will find uh, we're going to have a C, and then since this is an A, we're going to have a T, and that we will have an A will be a G, a C, a C, a T, and then we have T T T. So this is going to be a, 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 and then this finally, this is going to be a T, right? So there, there we go. Now, what are we doing? We're making messenger RNA. So remember, now the DNA, remember what I said, DNA by the polymerase will be read from three prime to the five prime, right? This is how DNA is going to be read from the, the three prime to the, the, the five prime. However, remember, how will it be written? MRA, mRNA will be writing it. So mRNA will write five prime to three prime. This is how MRA, MRA is going to write. 
So what do we do? Let's go down over here now. Okay, so three to five, uh, five prime polymerase is going to come and start reading it over here in this way. And then it's going to be written from the five prime to the three prime. All right. So if we make our, let's just pick, I don't know, here, this is all right, the blue. So we have five prime. Five prime, this will be three over this way. So what are we going to see? Now remember, we're going to see the opposite. So because this is a C, now remember, we're using this. The template strand is going to be coding for the mRNA. Uh, polymerase is going to be reading the template strand. So what are we going to find for the mRNA? We will have, if this is a C over here, we're going to have a G that's coming, that's being written here. Now, in place of a T, we have a A. In place of an A, remember, RNA does not have thymine. Instead, we have uracil. So the A is going to be a U. The G is going to be the C. C is going to be a G, a G. And then T will be a A. Okay? Then as we move forward, now we got the U, U, U. And then here's an A over there. Okay? So let's... Just highlight this to make it look a little bit better. Here's our mRNA over here, okay? This is our primary transcript that's been created during this elongation process. All right, now, with this, let's dig a little bit deeper, right, as to what's going on over here and look at, make sense a little bit of the machinery. So remember, what's, what's going to be occurring is this, what's happening. Now, when we look at this, these pairing that's taking place over here, in other words, here's our, the, the template strand that we have over here, right? This is our template strand that we're going to be working with. Okay. Um, so when you look at this template strand, and then we have the polymerase that comes over here, all right? RNA polymerase that's attached over here. So this is what's, what, what's going to be read. And remember, on the opposite end, we're going to have mRNA, right, that we're making. So this is going to be the mRNA that, that will be produced over here as is being, th this is what's being, uh, this is the transcript, the mRNA transcript that's, that's produced. So, uh, and then again, you have the five prime to the three prime end, of the uh, the sense strand that we find up, uh, over there. So we're going to be looking at the antisense strand. We're working with the antisense strand over here, uh, the template strand. And what we're going to find is this. This is what's going to be taking place. So these, remember, the ribonucleotides, as they're being added to that messenger RNA. Now, the template, here's the template over here. Okay, this is what's being read. Remember, in this three to five. So as polymerase is moving and reading in this way, what, it is, what, it, what ends up happening is we have the, uh, in the polymerase a bridge, a protein bridge that gets formed. So what ends up happening is only one nucleotide, this protein bridge moves one nucleotide forward. So each, as it's moving down, each of these nucleotide, let me, let me change this color. Each of these nucleotides, they end up being flipped down, okay, as the pro as each of these nucleotides are being read, okay. So I have a better idea. So let me do this. All right. So we're gonna have a bridge. Let's make a bridge over here. Uh, here. Oh, let me. Here's our bridge. All right. So what this bridge will do is that, again, this bridge, it takes this. Remember, this is what? This is, this. maybe this is a, I don't know. Maybe this is an, a, perhaps this is an A or a G. Let's just say this is a G. Now remember, this is flipped up this way. Because remember, what do we have? This is this part over here that you see that's flipped up. 
this is over here. And remember, this will eventually, before the, the nucleotide's added, it's connected to another nucleotide over here, right? So you got the two connections that are taking place. This is why this is facing upwards. So now, this is still flipped upwards because this is his normal orientation. Okay, but again, what do we need to do? We need to read this, right, and figure out what it is. The polymerase needs to read it. So as the polymerase is sliding through, it comes over to this guy, and then it takes it, this bridge, this, the, the protein bridge, it takes this and it flips it down. Okay, now it can read it. Oh, this is a G. All right, and then so what ends up, what do we have? What complements with the G? A C. So the ribial nucleotide, the C nucleotide, will then get added over, over here. There we go. Then what it is, then this protein bridge, it moves from that spot to the next spot, which is over here. Okay, and then what it will do here, it's gonna take this, and it's gonna flip that down as well. Now it can be read, oh, this is a, maybe this is a C. So what needs to end up happening, then we need another nucleotide. This nucleotide comes over, and then we have this nucleotide that will get added, all right? over here. All right, then once that's done, this bridge will move forward. Where is it gonna go now? Now it will go to this position over here. Okay, the bridge is moved over here. And what is it gonna do? Same thing, it's gonna come. It's gonna come and uh, it's gonna flip this. Back down this way. make a bridge again there we go it's gonna bring it there flips it down and then let's just say this is a uh, okay that's a T here all right so now what are we gonna have over here we'll get an A right so again you get another nucleotide that comes over here boom that gets added now okay so now we have another one that's our A so as this is going with this protein bridge, it only reads one nucleotide at a time, one, nu uh, one nucleotide base forward. It's going to be reading one at a time. So it goes over here, and then next, it's going to let this go. We'll move to the next spot. As, uh, so here, let's color this. There we go. And then, here we go. This will get moved to this point. So it will continue to move forward. There we go. At now this will be over here, right? So again, th this is going to be connected. This, here we go. So as it's going down, now this is going to get flipped inwards. Let's take this, there we go, all right? Now this is, gets read, and then whatever, uh, this is good, whatever base that is, it's complementary base will come over here, and then same thing will happen forward. It continues the protein bridge. Let's draw the protein bridge over here now. The protein bridge will next flip this guy over and have it read, and as it does that, whatever nucleotide this is, it ends up being recruited. Okay, so imagine this is a, this is a, there we go. Perhaps this is a C, so then this would be a G in this sense, right? So, and then again, it, same thing will happen over again. Now it will move to the next one. Protein bridge will come over here now, and it's gonna read that and add it on. So this is essentially what the process of elongation is. And this will continue on and on and on. You know, it, it will continue to read this until it gets to the termination sequence. And at that point where it will start, uh, start it will stop transcribing and the, the polymerase will fall off at that point from the, the template strand, All right? So that is the process of elongation. So for termination in prokaryotic cells, we end up there finding a protein, which is an RHO factor. And this ends up 
bringing termination to an end in, in prokaryotes and uh, the, the dissociation of the RNA pol polymerase from the, the template strand. In the eukaryotes, we have a polyadenylation sequence that will start the termination process. It doesn't completely stop it, but again, it starts it. So what we find is that in the, the ribosome, right, th there's a couple of other um, proteins that, that play a role, okay? And, or again, the, the S. So these are CPSF and CSTF. So CPFS is cleavage and uh, polyadenylation specificity factor, and CSTF is cleavage stimulation factor. Okay, so these are very important, and again, we, we find this on the C tail of polymerase. Right now, along with CPSF and CSTF, additional cleavage factors, again, these are endonucleases. These endonucleases, they eventually uh, cause the release of uh, CSTF and cleavage of mRNA from the ribosome, all right? Once that takes place, um, we end up having a poly A polymerase that comes to that free mRNA that's been cleaved, and it starts adding adenine to it. Okay, so again, it'll add up maybe 50, maybe 100, maybe 200 uh, ad uh, adenines to it, adenines to it. And again, it ends up getting this from ATP by uh, hydrolyzing it. In addition to that, um, we have PBPs, which is which are uh, which stands for poly A binding proteins, and these poly a binding proteins, they prevent the formation of, they prevent the, the, the RNA from forming a double strand, right? So this is their job. So um, the transcribed mRNA or the pre-mRNA, pre uh, sometimes I also call it the, the primary transcript. All of these terms, you know, you, you should be aware of and, uh, you know, they're, they can be used interchangeably. So the primary transcript, uh, it has to be modified before it's able to leave the nucleus. And the modification includes two key, two key things. The first is being the addition of, of the, the, the five, uh, of the cap at the five prime end. And the next is the, the latter is the, the addition of a poly A tail at the three prime end. So for the, the, five, the, the five prime cap, so the, the cap is, it, it binds the, the, the mature mRNA to the ribosome during translation. Okay? So during um, uh, you know, um, protein biosynthesis, which is taking place in the cytoplasm, having this five pr prime cap is a prerequisite. The cap also stabilizes the mRNA by being digested by ribonucleases. And again, in addition to that, the what we find is that again, it um, it prevents the the RNA from unraveling, okay. And the other thing is, you know, the um, in in eukaryotic cells, if the mRNA does not have a five prime cap, they're not efficiently translated, right? So this is something else that we find. Now, moving on to the the uh, poly A tail. So the poly A tail, again, it's added at the, 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 the three prime end of the mRNA. And it's about between two to 300 adenylate residues. Okay, and they're linked by phosphodiester bonds. Uh, again, uh, the, the donor for the adenylate is ATP. And the poly A tail also helps stabilize the mRNA, right? Now, the other thing is that uh, the poly A tail, it also assists in the export of mRNA out of the nucleus, okay? So it plays a role in the export of the mRNA, so it, it helps it leave through the nuclear pores into the cytoplasm for translation to take place.
So moving on to uh, termination. Um, essentially, in the last slide, we talked about, you know, once we get to, the, to this uh, specific sequence on the DNA that's called the terminator region, the polymerase ends up getting released. So um, again, in prokaryotic cells, you know, when the mRNA gets transcribed, you end up getting this double AU, triple A elongation uh, tr uh, sequence at the end. So in, again, in prokaryotic cells, there's also this, there's another factor. Uh, there's another protein, it's called, a, the protein's called an RHO factor. And this ends up uh, attaching to that DNA strand and the RNA polymerase at that point cannot uh, move anymore. And then it ends up dissociating from that uh, DNA strand. And that essentially will terminate the, uh, the transcription. So again, in prokaryotes, this is, keep this in mind, this is gonna be in pro prokaryotes this RHO factor, it's gonna end up attaching to the DNA strand and it's, it's gonna cause this RNA polymerase to freeze, more or less, because then it can't move anymore. And once that happens, then it will uh, it'll dissociate, it falls off, let's put this in, falls off or dissociates from that DNA. And then finally we end up with termination that results. All right, now in eukaryotes, Things are a little bit more complicated, okay? Things are it's not as easy uh, as that. So let's talk about that now. All right, so let's continue with this. Now, here's our DNA, a stretch of DNA over here that we have. And again, this is our promoter region over here, and then this is the terminator region over here. So by the time the, uh, the uh, polymerase, it ends up coming to the terminator region. What's going to end up happening is here, it comes over here, and now let's make our little stretch of, of uh, the uh, mRNA. This is our primary transcript that results, and so again, remember, it's going to have this five prime end over here, and this is our five prime, prime end, and remember, it's going like this, so then this is going to be our three prime end over here, okay? So we have this stretch of mRNA that's been created, and we are the the this uh, polymerase has come to this termination sequence. And again, this is gonna be some, uh, some sequence, this poly, uh, polyadylation sequence that ends up being, uh, it you know, brings trans transcription to, uh, it signals, it's a signal. So when you come over here, there's a sequence over here. It's a poly, here, let me write that down. It's a polyadylation sequence. Okay, and this poly polyadylation sequence, it's gonna end up making, here. It's gonna end up making uh, a specific sequence over there. Let's just make it like this, for example. Okay, and this signals that transcription is it's coming to an end, it's, it's, it's over, okay? We've built everything that uh, we're supposed to produce, and uh, this is it, this is the end of it, all right? Now, remember, polymerase, it has this, this C tail, the C terminal tail that's present also. So over there, what we find uh, are two, two factors at this tail. So let's draw these factors out. One of these factors is gonna be on this tail. One of the factors is a, it's called cleavage stimulation factor, okay? Cleav cleavage stimulation factor. So here, let's just make this like this. We'll call this the cleavage stimulation factor. Then we have another one, another protein uh, that is called okay, another protein. And let me switch this out for a minute. Um, there we go. The other protein that's that's playing over here is called cleavage polyadylination specificity factor. Okay, so this one over here is C P S F. So this stands for for cleavage polyadylation specificity factor. So 
these two things are going to play an important role in uh, as to what's going to be happening next. So again, remember, as this is happening now, as this is uh, this uh, primary tra transcript has been produced, something gets hap something happens over here. So there's actually two things that must occur. Uh, one of them is that we end up we need to have this five prime end. It needs to be capped, and I'll, we'll talk about what this means uh, in a couple of slides later. But no, uh, for, for for right now, what I'm going to tell you is that this capping, let me put five prime cap, okay, gets added. And it's just essentially it's just a guanine, it's a guanine cap, and that will occur over here at this five prime end. Okay, so it ends up getting capped by this guanine sequence. Next thing is. Uh, we need to have a poly A tail. So a poly A tail. These two things need to happen. So this will occur, the second part, this will occur after transcription starts. Okay? This, this, this takes place. This is going to be taking place now uh, at, at this point. This is where we're coming to now, and we're going to be talking about that. So remember, we've created this primary transcript at this point, and we've come to this sequence over here. And uh, again, we've uh, go gotten to this terminator. Polymerase has reached the termination sequence. And again, it, this is a polyadenylation sequence, which is going to uh, make it, uh, it ends up creating these over here that I've written out in, in purple. Okay. So now what will occur is that we will, what ends up happening is these CPSF and CSTF, they end up being attracted. Now remember, they're in relatively close proximity. So I drew this down here, here. That's better, okay? so. This ends up, now you can see that it is close to this site. Okay? It's close to the transcript. So these will then get released from the poly A tail, and then it ends up coming and they will bind to this poly, the, to this specific sequence. So let's go ahead and do that. All right? Erase that, erase that. Now guess what happens? They will come and they end up binding. So here, I have no idea what colors I used. Okay, so it's... This one, as I say, this will come over. Oh, this will come over there. And the other other color is going to be this one. The two four four. Um, there we go. Let's make it. Now they're both over here in, in position. Okay, so CPSF and the CSTF they end up being transferred and linked to the mRNA as we've drawn over here. Okay, so that's what, what, what ended up happening at this point. Now, what ends up happening is that, let me draw one more picture now. So here, let me make another picture. What's gonna end up happening is this thing moves down. So here's our, again, here's our DNA over here. Okay, we had our, had our uh, this is our promoter region here. And then we came to the uh, the termination sequence over here, all right? Termination sequence over here. So polymerase, it's actually gonna again, it's it continues once it gets to the termination region, it's gonna continue. Now it's move over here. Okay, that's a five prime, and then here's our three prime end over here. So once it got, when we got to this point over here, when you when we reached this termination sequence at this point, what, what ended up happening is, you know, the, we end up getting the polyadenylation sequence. And again, we drew that out with this series over here. Now we're just saying at this point that we've passed that point, that we've passed that part. So again, the polymerase, it continues to move forward. And we'll talk about uh, the signals that is essentially the end up, uh, which will cause it to stop uh, or, or the conformational changes that occur. So. Uh, we'll get to that in, in a minute. Now, let's come back over here. We'll focus back over here uh, to this part. 
So what's going to end up happening is that the so we had our sequence over here. Right? This poly polyadulation sequence that, that's present. Now, and remember what we said, we had these, the CSF and the, uh, the CSTF and the CPSF. They ended up being CPSF, there we go. They ended up coming and attaching over here. So let's just draw that out again. There we go. We're back over here with that. And then we have another one over here, all right? Now, now that th this is on the transcript, they end up recruiting endonucleases, okay, that are called additional cleavage factors, okay? So they end up recruiting additional cleavage factors, all right? So let's draw that in there. Um, here. So now we have this additional cleavage factor that uh, that ends up coming in place. Okay, so this endonucleus, the ACF, gets recruited. This causes the release of CSTF, and it cleaves right after this poly uh, and the cleavage of the poly uh, of the mRNA right after the polyadulation sequence. So here, what's going to end up happening is this. Look, we had the, let's go over here. So this is our CSTF, right? There we go. This is our additional cleavage factor over here. Now, what's gonna end up happening is once this additional cleavage factor comes in, it causes, right at this point, it cleaves it, cuts it off, okay? It causes these two things to, to fall off. So at this point, now mRNA is free. Okay, now it's, it's floating around, it's, it's free. Okay, let's come down there. So what do we have left? Now we have left on the mRNA. Here we have the, this polyadulation sequence and it's still attached to the polyadulation sequence. We still have CPSF that's attached to it, okay? So CPSF is still here, right? So this hasn't gone anywhere. Remember, this is this cleavage and polyadulation specificity factor. This is still in place. So now what ends up happening is the this CPSF, all right, what it will do is it ends up recruiting polymerase A, I'm sorry, not polymerase, it's poly, here, there we go, it's poly A polymerase, it ends up recruiting poly a polymerase. Okay, so poly A polymerase, this is a P, poly A polymerase poly A polymerase uh, will add okay, this adenine, uh, adenine right? at the end of where the cleavage occurred. And it ends up getting this, the adenines from, by, from ATP, okay? It ends up getting from ATP. So I don't know if there's 200 or if it's, I don't know, 100 adenines that end up getting added, it ends up using up 100 ATP molecules uh, to get the adenine from them, okay? So this is what, will, uh, what ends up happening at this point. Now, now that we have this this ad, uh, this uh, adenine sequence at the end, what ends up happening is there is another one. There's another protein that comes into place, and it's called that uh, actually that will come in the bind to this, and those are called poly A binding.
proteins. In Oregon, you can just call them PBPs, okay? PBPs. So the poly A binding proteins will end up coming, and again, they what they do is they end up uh, they protect this part. And they protect so that that uh, the RNA doesn't end up folding on itself, so it doesn't end up forming a, a helix with it. So this is the job for that. It, it prevents the the formation of a, of a double strand RNA. Okay, this is a job for PBP. Now, even though we have this mRNA here that's free, all right, and you know we're, we're finished with it at this point, the uh, polymerase is still attached. To, it's still kind of moving along. So what ends up happening is this. They think that, again, once this has been cleaved off, okay, once you get the cleavage that forms, one of the theories is uh, that at that point, when that cleavage occurs, there's a conformational change that takes place. Because uh, Remember what ends up happening when that cleavage occurs. The, the, uh, at that point, remember, you end up losing these, where is it here? The CSTF and the CPSF, remember, they end up separating, right? They end up going over here to the this polyadenylation sequence. So the, one, of the, one of the theories is, is when that occurs, uh, it, that conformational changes, it ends up causing this polymerase to eventually fall off. Okay, and then hence, uh, this will cause the dissociation and the complete um, uh, cessation or termination of transcription. All right, uh, so that is it for now, for, for this part. So the resulting um, primary transcript that we have is too long and it has to be shortened in the nucleus before it can leave. So we have further modification that occurs. We have exons, which are segments of the, the, the primary transcript that contains information that ends up being reflected in the polypeptide chains that are created during translation. In other words, these are the actual codes for the proteins. Then you have segments, okay, which are called introns, um, again, that are part of this primary transcript that separates the exons, all right? So we have, uh, think of them as being spacers, right? So they space, they're found between the exons, right? All right, so we've taken our primary transcript. We have a poly A tail and we have a phi prime cap. Now what needs to be done? Well, we need to kind of make it a little, little bit smaller. We have to chop up and remove the parts that we don't need. So, and we said in the previous slide, the parts that are not needed are the spacers and those spacers are called the introns. Okay, and the parts that are actually coding for the proteins are the exons. So here's an exon here, here's another exon over there. So the small nuclear ribonucleic proteins or SNRNPs, they're able to recognize the introns, okay? And along with the help of some other proteins, they form a structure that's called a spliceosome. And essentially they pull out, they cut out the intron and they glue together the, um, the two exons. Okay, so then this is what we have over here. Here is that excise intron. It's uh, going to end up being recycled, reused uh, to form other stuff, other other, other materials. Other, you know, they're going to play parts for other uh, ribonucleotides to be used later. And these will also get end up uh, the uh, SNRNPs. They'll also end up being recycled uh, to reuse to uh, for the process to reoccur over and over again. So then, again, if you look over here. We have uh, exons, introns, exons, introns. And what ends up, here's our, uh, our uh, cap over here and that's our poly A tail. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking this, we're gonna be removing these uh, introns, okay? And then we end up gluing the exons. And now we have this five prime cap and the, three, uh, uh, the poly A tail. Now this is ready to leave the nucleus. So now this is gonna, once we do all the splicing, uh, all this, the, the splicing is done, and the cap and the poly A tail is in, uh, present. Now this RNA can leave. This mature RNA is able to leave through the nuclear pore, uh, 
of the nucleus into the cytoplasm, and it will start the process of uh, translation. Okay, so uh, I'm about to laugh. I'm saying cytosplasm. <laughs> like, okay, uh, I've been doing this way too long for today. So, anyways, that's the end of this le lecture for this lesson in transcription. So I know we went over a lot of details, but um, you know, you guys uh, try to do your best with with uh, I don't know, watching this couple, watch it over again, watch it a couple of times. It's is it difficult? No. Uh, is there a lot of parts to it? Yes, there's lots of components to it, but it's actually not that difficult. There's just so many, so many, so many, so many different proteins and cofactors and enzymes, and they all come in. Again, you know, what you learned in high school and in elementary school was the very basics. Now, again, this level that you're learning over here, it's a little bit deeper, but believe it or not, it's, it, there's actually more details to what I've presented as well. There's a different level that you can go to. So again, it, the, the, the amount of, compl it's rather quite, it's a complex process. Okay, it's not very difficult to understand. You just have to learn all the different parts. And then once you learn the names of all the different parts, then you understand when they come in and do what they do. Uh, and again, some of the, the names are a little bit confusing, as I was saying, splices or I don't know, cytoplasm. Um, but yeah, they, they have names that sound a little bit funny. Uh, or again, they sound similar, but um, it's not that bad. Well, I hope uh, you guys are all doing well, and um, hopefully we will continue with this in the next lecture. Not with this, but we will continue with the process where we ended off over here with uh, transcription, and next we're going to be moving on to translation. All right, uh, thank you again.